to connect to the class here. <clears throat> I think I'm going to uh, to get started with uh, today's uh, presentation, and um, then uh, people who might miss some of the stuff in the beginning can go back and look at the recording. Okay, so let me uh, let me start my full screen recording here. Okay, here we are. And I have my first example for today. Um, and it has the. Uh, a title um, conditionals. So what are conditionals? Well, we dealt with those when we were talking about Excel a few weeks ago. Conditionals generally refer to if then else statements. And uh, without if then else statements, uh, computer programs would be really boring. And uh, it's the if then else statements that really allow us to do um, powerful things with uh, with programs. And so this is what we're going to be looking at mostly today is using if then else statements to control what's going on uh, in our processing program. OK, so here we have the our first example. And um, it's uh, we start off simple enough. We're going to define a few variables here. Uh, RGB and, um, and so as you might imagine these refer to red green and blue as we're doing colors in the program. Um, so notice that we define our variables first thing before we do anything else in the program. When we do this it has the special feature that these variables then can be used within uh, any any subroutine in the program. What do I mean? I haven't really talked about uh, subroutines and subroutine is kind of an old word. It's the word that I grew up with today. People might call them methods or functions or whatever, depending on which programming language you're using. And uh, a subroutine is a block of code uh, that executes when something happens OK in the program. And typically here we're going to have two blocks of code. We have void setup and this is code that runs once right in the beginning of the program. And then we have void draw and void draw runs over and over and over again in the program. You can think of these as two separate subroutines. By defining these variables before anything here, we uh, these variables can be used in any subroutine in the program. Now, why isn't that always true? Well, it turns out that if we chose to define these variables, let's say, in a specific subroutine, that is the only place where those variables are defined. And uh, we we may see this later in the in the uh, in the class. They're quickly running through our weeks here. Uh, so, right, I mean, there's like a quarter of the class. So we're halfway through November. We got like another month. So I don't know if we're going to get to that. But in any case, uh, for us, typically we're going to define our variables right in the beginning of the program. RGB. Notice we're setting R to be 150, green to be zero, blue to be zero. Here we set up the size of our graphics window, 480 by 270. And then we go into void draw. And uh, so I begin by saying we're going to draw th stuff. OK, that's, I guess, pretty descriptive. We're going to set the background to be RGB. OK. Stroke 255. Remember, 255 is white. Um, here we're going to draw a line in the window. The line goes from X equals width over 2, Y equals 0, to X equals width over 2, Y equals height. Now, 
width over two is the width of the window. In this case, it's 480. So this is halfway across the window. So if this whole thing were the window, we'd be drawing a line from this point, which is width over two, y equals zero, all the way down to this point, which is width over two, y equals height. So we're dividing the window in half vertically, like that, with a vertical line. And uh, so we're drawing a line like uh, down the window, right in the middle. And then we're saying that we what we want to do is that the mouse is on the right side of the screen, right side of the window. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Um, well, if the mouse is on the right side of the screen, how, how do we represent that using if statements? Well, here is an if statement right here. And then if this if statement is true, and I'll tell you, we'll go over this in a second. If this statement is true, we execute this block of code that goes from here to here, here to here. Notice if I click on this curly bracket, its companion bracket is, is, uh, is highlighted, has a rectangle around it. Similarly, if I click on this companion, this bracket, its companion bracket is highlighted, which is sometimes a useful way of figuring out exactly uh, what the block of code is. So if this statement is true, all of the code between this curly bracket and this curly bracket, in this case, it's just this one line, is executed. Okay, if this statement is false, then we jump down to the else, and else is executed, whatever is here, between this curly bracket and this curly bracket. So this is referred to as an if then else um, uh, piece of code. So if mouse x is greater than width over two. Remember mouse x is the x position of the mouse cursor in the window. So if the cursor's on the right side of the window, that's greater than width over two, we're going to increase the value of R. So where R starts off at 150, we're going to increase the value of R by one. If this is not true, we decrease the value of R by one. So it looks like if the mouse cursor is in the right-hand side of the, win of the window, we're going to be making the color, the background color, to be more red. If it's not in the right side of the window, we'll be making the background color darker. Okay, so we'll see this in a minute. And then we say of R, now what happens, of course, the largest value that R can be is 255. So now we have, if R is greater than 255, set it back to 255. If R is less than zero, set it back to zero because, you know, um, it's supposed to be from zero to 255. So here we say if R is greater than zero, we execute this block of code from here to here and we set it back to 255. And then otherwise, if it's not greater than 255, we check is it less than zero. If it's less than zero, we execute this block of code and we set R back to zero. Okay, so there we're using um, two, it, two sets of if, if then else statements. Notice that we can, this is if else, and then this is if else, but then this else contains another if statement. So actually there are three if statements. So, this is a, a fairly complicated use of if statements. And um, now let's let's run the program and see what happens. Run. OK, so we started off red and then immediately turned to black. Why? What's going on? Well, the background starts off, let's say, with a medium red because we said red to be 150. And uh, here's the vertical line going halfway down the window. 
And then we say if the mouse is on the right side of the screen, on the right side of that vertical line, we're going to be making the background redder and redder and redder. Because notice what happens is we increase value of R. Then the next time through, we void draw because void draw loops over and over again. Next time through void draw, we have the increased value of R. So every time, as long as the mouse is on the right hand side of the window, every time through we go, we go through the void draw, we're going to increase the red by one. And we're going to keep increasing it by one until we get to 255. And when we get to 255, it'll stay at 255. If the mouse is not in the right hand side of the window, we make it, we decrease red and make it darker and darker and darker. Okay. And uh, so a similar thing happens, except now the background of the window is getting darker. So here the background is black. So I have the mouse that's in the left hand side of the window, it stays black. <clears throat> <clears throat> ah. Now, as I move over here, it's on the right side of the window. It gets brighter red, brighter red and brighter red. So I move back to left side, left side of the window. It goes darker and darker and darker. So there's an example using if statements. And then depending on the position, the X position of the mouse, we, um, um, <clears throat> ah, are changing the background color of the window. Now, um, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> Gonna clean up. <clears throat> my lungs there because <clears throat> it's early in the morning here i get up there's no one around everyone else is asleep there's no one to talk to <clears throat> so i don't get a chance to clean the congestion out of my lungs okay now okay so there's that that example let's go now to the next example back example five two Here we go. <clears throat> okay, another clever title on this particular program called more conditionals. So we again set three variables for background color, RGB, RBG here, red, and then we have blue, green. So notice the orders change here. Okay, void setup. Okay, here we set the size of the window. Now, let me make this a little bit larger here. So we get an avoid draw. We set the background. Stroke is white here, uh, 255. Again, line, we're drawing, we have line going uh, halfway across the window, y equals zero to halfway across the window, y equals height. Here we're drawing a line x equals zero to y equals height over two and then x equals width y equals height. what what exactly what are we doing here we have two lines this line and this line so what, what's that what are we doing there what's that going to look like here let's just run it and see there we go look at that we're drawing a line down and then we're drawing a line across like that okay so width over two zero that's this point we're drawing it to width over two height that's this point and then x equals zero height over y equals height over two that's this point to x equals width y equals height over two that's this point so we're dividing the window into quadrants into four parts now if if mouse is on the right hand side of the window we increase red. Otherwise, it is on the left hand side and decreases red. So let's look at this. Mouse is on the right hand side. 
we get red, 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 really bright red. Over here, red decreases. Okay. So if mouse X is greater than width over two, we execute this block of code that goes from here to here. We increase red by one, else we decrease red, same as before. Here we have another, if mouse is at the bottom of the window, increase blue. So here we're at the bottom, it's as blue as it gets, I guess. Otherwise, if it's on the top, decrease blue. So there blue is decreasing, it's going back to black. Okay, B equals B plus one, else B equals B minus one. So this is just like we did with the red, except this is the block of code there. And for the else statement, this is the block of code. And if mouse is pressed, using the system variable mouse pressed, so mouse pressed is a predefined variable in processing. OK, if mouse pressed is true, and it's true whenever we press the mouse, it increases green by one. Otherwise, it decreases green by one. OK, and here we're constraining all the color values. Constrain is also a built-in variable. And um, so what's going, how does constrain work here? Uh, constrain takes the variable R and restricts it to be between zero and 255. So R cannot go out of this range. Same thing with green. Green is constrained between zero and 255, as is blue. Now, let's see, here we have a curly bracket. You might wonder, what, what's the companion of that curly bracket here? Where is that? Well, we have to go, it's all the way up here, the beginning of void draw. So this is the curly bracket that defines void draw. Everything inside the, those two curly brackets is void draw. So this is a more more complicated program with if statements and not only do we have four quadrants but let's see what happens if i press the mouse button and it turns green look at that right there so if i have it over here down in the bottom It's combination of green and blue, which is what I'm getting there. I let go. And it goes back to blue. I go to the right here. It should go red. Now I press the mouse. It should be a combination of green and red, which is a bright yellow. There we go. So that's what this program is doing here. As we have several if statements controlling the color, and we have an if statement checking to see if the mouse is pressed. Now, let me just go over here. We have built in variables. Width and height are defined by these two numbers width and height. So these are built in, they're red. That's the red makes them stand out as being built in variables. So then we have the X position of the mouse. That's a built in variable. The Y position of the mouse. That's a built in variable. Mouse pressed is a Boolean. It's either true or false. If it's true, in other words, if the mouse is pressed. So if true, if true, then we execute this block of code from here to here. If it's false, we execute this block of code from here to here. So that's what we're doing with all these if statements. So our programs are starting to get pretty complicated in terms of logic. 
Now, sometimes uh, what people do when they think, well, I want to write a program that does something, they actually write out what they want to happen and draw themselves a little chart in that if this is true, then it turns red. If this other thing is true, it turns green and so on and so forth. So um, I uh, actually have rarely done that. I kind of keep the chart in my head. But as the programs get more and more complicated, uh, you may want to. I, I have drawn charts, it's just I don't normally do it, maybe because I don't normally write complicated programs. OK, so we have a lot of if statements here. So notice how using if statements, if then else statements, makes the programs much more interesting. So let's just see that again. Black, red, blue, red and blue. So we're getting sort of a purple there. And I click to bring up green, and red, green, blue, and green makes everything white. Now look at that right there. Okay. So, interesting uh, combination of if statements uh, to get that result. Let me close this out and go to the next example. Okay, here we go. Rollovers. It's a shorter program than before. But what's going on here? We set up. Notice I'm not defining any variables in the beginning of the program. We set up our window. So width is 480, height is 270. We have a void draw. Set our background to be 255, stroke to be black, zero. We draw two lines. Um, we'll see what those are in a moment. Uh, we fill with black color first. That's what's going on here. And then we have, depending on the mouse location, a different rectangle um, is, uh, is displayed. So here we have this right here. Let's just see what happens here. Notice what's going on is if I move the mouse, the quadrant turns black. OK. So here I'm checking the X position. And here, here, let me, I, um, I have to go and take care of something right now just for a minute, but uh, I won't be gone long. Uh, why don't you check here what the double ampersand means in processing. So go on Google um, processing and 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 see what comes up so you can see what this what this does. And uh, here I'll be back in a moment.
Okay, I'm <clears throat> back with my coffee here. Um, okay, now I uh, hope you had the opportunity to look up the the double ampersand. We're doing logical statements. We want to know how to check to see if two things are simultaneously true with an AND statement or with an OR statement. And the double ampersand is an AND statement. So when I have that, for example, right here, if the X position of the mouse, mouse X, is less than 240, and if mouse Y is less than 135. Okay, so 240 is right down the middle here, and 135 is right across the middle here. So we're saying if we're less than 240 and less than 135, so that puts us in the first quadrant. Okay, then we draw a rectangle here, this rectangle right here. If mouse X is less than 240, mouse Y is a then we wrecked 0, 0, 240, 135. So it's uh, so depending on the mouse location, a different rectangle is displayed. So that displays this rectangle. Now you may say, well, what do you mean? Does the rectangle is already displayed? Well, all we did before was we divided the window in half. So we sort of virtually created a rectangle, but this actually draws the rectangle right in here. And the rectangle is filled with black. Now, else if mouse X is greater than 240 and mouse Y is less than 135, so greater than 240, but that's the top part over here. So then it draws this rectangle. Notice that we're, and then we have our two other rectangles. So this is drawing one of four rectangles depending on the position of the mouse. And the rectangle is obviously being filled with black. Fill zero, no stroke, fill zero. So it's drawing a rectangle, filling it with black because we set fill to be zero right here. So that's what's going on with this. And then and checks to see that both this and this is true. If one of these is not true, then this statement is not executed. So it's only if this is greater than 240 and this is less than 135 that this rectangle is drawn, okay? So that's here. And only if X, mouse X is less than 240 and mouse Y is greater than 135, that we draw this rectangle. And similarly here. So the and checks, is this true and this true? If so, we execute this block of code that goes from here to here. And the only statement contained in that block is this rectangle statement. So that is what is going on here with these well, set of if statements. So that is what's going on with this program right in here. We're drawing one rectangle or another, depending on the X and Y position of the mouse. So using these logical statements um, is how we do really interesting things in the computer programs. And it, we did interesting things in Excel with the logical if statements too. Okay, so that's what's going on here with this. OK, 
Okay, now so now let me uh, let me close this. There we go. Let me go to the next example. And then I'll take a drink of my coffee here. Okay, hold down the button. And presumably that's the mouse button, right? Okay, now I begin by setting the uh, Boolean variable button to be false. Remember, Boolean variables take on two values, true and false. Now, I'm also, I define this Boolean variable. I'm also setting a bunch of other variable values. These are integer variables. See that integer X, integer Y, same thing, W and H right in here. Void setup sets up the window. Now, let me make this a little bit larger here. Void draw. The button is pressed. If mouse X and mouse Y, so we're going to press the button on the mouse. If the X and Y position of the mouse is inside the rectangle and the mouse pressed is true. So what's going on? Let's look at this again. We have this if statement. And it's a complicated if statement. Lots of ands here. So if mouse X is greater than X and mouse X is less than X plus W. So here we're setting a range of values. We want the position of the mouse to be greater than a, a value and less than another value. So greater than X and less than X plus W. And if mouse Y is greater than Y and mouse Y is less than Y plus H. OK, so we're setting a range of values for the Y position of the mouse. And if mouse is pressed, so all of these things have to be true. If they're all true, then. Button is true. Huh. So we're setting button to be false. It stays false unless all of these things are true. If any one of these statements is not true, the, the entire if statement with all the ands is not true. The only time this is all true, the only time what goes between these parentheses here and here, the only time this is true is if every one of these statements between the ampersands is true. So if that's true, we change the value button to be true. If one of these is not true or more than one, then we set the value button back to be false. Now we say if button, if button was, so here we're checking, is button true or false? If it's true, we set the background to white, stroke to be zero. Else, if button is false, we go down here to else, we set the background to be zero a stroke to be white. OK, and there here we have a fill statement, fill 175 rectangle. Let's see. Let's see what this whole thing does here. Let me run it. OK, so we have our graphic windows filled with black. And then inside we have. This rectangle. Fill with gray. That'd be our fill 175. Fill X, Y, W, H. So we're filling a rectangle. Um, corner, upper left hand corner is a position X, Y. The rectangle is W wide and H high. That's this rectangle. Okay. Now we're pressing our mouse. So we're checking to see what all of this is set up to check. Is, is the position of the mouse inside the rectangle or not? If it's inside the rectangle, the cursor for the mouse, if it's inside the rectangle and we press the mouse, that which makes 
mouse pressed true. If all of this, then we change the value of button to be true. And if button is true, what's going to happen? Void draw. So here we set up here, we set button to be false. If button is true, we're changing for the rectangle that we're drawing. Here it looks like we're, if button is true, we're changing the value of background and stroke. If button is, remember the stroke is white, background is zero. So the stroke is white. That's the perimeter of the rectangle. Okay, let's see what happens. Let me put my mouse inside the rectangle, press the button, and the background of the graphic becomes white instead of black. And the perimeter of the rectangle here becomes black instead of white. So that's what's happening. OK, so now notice if I have the mouse outside the rectangle and I press the button, I'm pressing the button even though you can't see it. I'm pressing the button and nothing happens. Press the button and the background changes there. OK, so. Ah, so this is a way if we're writing a program and we want to graphically have certain buttons that do things, you know, you have a user interface and if you press a button on a user interface, right, that happens on your phone, on your laptop all the time, you have buttons. You're supposed to position the mouse on a button and press the mouse. It's like clicking the button. Usually when you press the button, not only does some, you also make a clicking sound to sort of give you auditory feedback that you're pressing the button. We don't have the auditory feedback here, but we get inside here, we press the button and something happens. So this is how we would implement a button press in a program. Is So I guess you never realize that doing a button press right here involves this, a whole complicated if statement. So we're checking the position of the mouse. Is it over the button here? And we're checking to see if the mouse button is pressed. And if all those things are true, then when you press the mouse button, something happens. We can put another button here and then have something else to happen if we press the other button. So we can put a whole set of buttons in there by putting if statements like this. OK, so this is actually something potentially useful if you're designing a user interface uh, for your for your phone. You, you know, the user interface in the phone, the buttons on the phone that you might be pressing, the virtual buttons on the screen will be implemented with a piece of software much like this here. And um, so surprise, this is, isn't uh, you know, just simple, trivial stuff there. Of course, once you do this a few times, it becomes second nature. But here, going through the first time, you see everything that has to happen in order for that button press to work. OK. So let's close this, go to the next example. OK, I'm running, running out of time here, I think. I don't know if I'll get all these. Uh, is this it? I wasn't paying attention. OK. This is what I was just, this is a little bit different. OK. Very similar, but a little bit different. OK, button as a switch. In the previous example, you couldn't tell because you weren't pushing my mouse button, but um, the switch in the background color only stayed as long as I had the button pressed. As soon as I released the button, it went back. Now what I want is I want to press the button on the mouse 
and have it stay even after I release the button. So I want the change in the background to stay even after I release the mouse button. And that's what this software. Is. So we call this button as switch. So here we go right here. Boolean button is false, same as then. Integer X, Y, W, H. This would be the upper left hand corner of our small rectangle. This is the width of the rectangle, the height of the rectangle. A void setup, we set up our graphics window. Okay, if button, so we're checking, is button true or false? If button is true, we're changing the background to be white and the stroke on the, on the rectangle to be black. Otherwise, if button is false, the background is black and the stroke is white. So here, we're filling the rectangle with a gray. And uh, let's see what this is. The function mouse press is called whenever the mouse is pressed, no matter where it is located in the code. This is important. And if you didn't realize this, if you're writing a program later using the mouse pressed function. Here, if we have mouse pressed with an open closed parentheses, this is a function. Mouse pressed without an open closed parentheses is just a true and a false variable. This is a confusing difference. If I don't have the open and closed parentheses, mouse pressed is just a variable. If I do have open and closed parentheses, mouse pressed is a function. Ah, uh, what's going on here? This is an area of potential confusion. So what's happening is that, let's go back over what we understand about how our program is set up. Okay, we have void setup here. Void setup will execute once, setting up our graphics window. Void draw goes over and over and over again. And typically, the program would not execute anything outside of void draw unless I direct the program to go outside this void draw loop. The void draw loop goes from here to here. So it just keeps running the round over and over and over and over again. However, we have this built in function, mouse pressed. Press the mouse. While the mouse is pressed, the, pro the program execution goes outside of void draw and goes to void mouse pressed. So as long as the mouse is pressed, it jumps to here and it looks at this if statement. And if this if statement is true, it executes what's between these two curly brackets. It says button equal to explanation point button. This is another new exclamation point button. So back in the day, uh, when we saw an exclamation point in a piece of code, we called it bang. Bang was what we called explanation point. I haven't heard people call it that much anymore. Okay, what this does, when we have a Boolean variable, and button is a Boolean variable, it's false. If we say bang button, if button is false, bang button is true. If button is true, bang button is false. So this is that way in several different computer languages. We put an explanation point before a Boolean variable and it switches the value from true to false or false to true. So what we're doing is if all of these statements are true, 
we execute button equals bang button. So in other words, if button is false, we, this changes this to true, and we put true into button. If, if, it, if button previously were true, bang button changes the value to false, and we put that value into button. So this statement right here switches button from true to false or false to true, depending on what the original value of button was at that time. So what's going on here is that this. Here I'm running it. So you know, as I move the mouse around, nothing is happening. I'm pressing my mouse here. It's outside the rectangle, so nothing happens. Now, if it's inside the rectangle and I press the mouse button, what happens is then all of these here are true because it's inside the rectangle. And mouse press, so as soon as I press the mouse, Mouse press executes because mouse press is true. If mouse press executes, it checks to see is the position of the cursor inside the rectangle. If it is, it switches the value of button. So if button originally were false, it now switches the value of button to true. And if button is true, it changes the background to white. Now button, let's say, is true. If I press mouse again, it will take the true value button with the exclamation point in front of it, changes that true value to false, puts that false value in here. So when I press the mouse, the execution of the program jumps to here. And then when I release the mouse, it goes back to where it was in void draw executing void draw. But in this case, I have switched the value of button from either true to false or false to true. So what gets executed in here changes. So now button is true because the background is white. I click the mouse outside the rectangle and nothing happens. But when I click the mouse, mouse press executes, but it's checking. It says the position of the of the cursor is not inside the rectangle, so it doesn't change the value button. But if I put the cursor inside the rectangle and click it, this is true. So then it switches the value of button, which was previously true because it was white, switches it to false in here. So button now becomes false, and then it continuing the execution of void draw with the value of button to false. OK, so our programs are starting to be become a lot more complicated than they were. In the beginning, we were just drawing some shapes, trying to figure out you know, where we were going to put rectangles or circles and what the sizes were going to be and what the colors were going to be. Now, all of a sudden, by adding these logical if statements, the programs become much more powerful and much more complicated. And uh, which is why it's you have to be good at logic to do computer programming. OK, so what's this piece of code doing here? It's just checking. If mouse is pressed, it immediately jumps to void mouse pressed. And I haven't really, I told you a little bit what void means, and I haven't talked about that a lot. Um, if you want to um, investigate that a little bit, you have to go and look at those tutorials um, that that guy does on the processing website and he'll tell you a little bit about how functions work and I haven't really told you a lot about that.
but void typically means that there's no printed output. We're not outputting values um, from the function. The, this is just executing things and causing things to change in the window, but it's not uh, generating values that go into files or or things of that sort. So void um, means something specific. Exactly what it means, though, is not critical at the moment. I don't want to add that complication right now to what we're doing. So if I press the mouse, mouse press is true. It executes this function. And in the previous example, we didn't have an open and close parentheses when we were using mouse press. Let's go back and look at the previous example. That was example four here. Okay, here mouse press was just a variable that would be true or false. There's no open and close parentheses here. It's not mouse pressed open close parentheses. This is just mouse pressed. So this is confusing. We're using the term mouse pressed to be two different things. Mouse pressed can either just be a variable that's true or false, or it can be a function. If it's a variable that's true or false, this is how we're using it right here. And you see that in our processing window, it's red, which means it's a system defined variable, just like mouse X and mouse Y are here and here. But here, as soon as we add the open and close parentheses, it changes from a variable to a function that gets executed. So with mouse pressed open and close parentheses, everything between this curly bracket and this curly bracket is executed. And here is this if statement, which checks the position of the cursor. So if we press the mouse, it executes this, which checks the position of the cursor, and then either does or doesn't change the Boolean button to be true or false, depending on the previous value. Now notice here, look at my shirt. I can't see my shirt. I'll show you. I'm almost done here. Almost done for today. So I've gone halfway through here. My um, example five. I've gone up to five five. I'll finish this next time because this is a complicated section. Okay. Now let me come back and uh, there we go. Now. You look at my shirt here. This shirt is a computer weenie joke. Notice I have what it says here. It says not false. It's funny because it's true. So it means that a logical statement that's false, I put not false. If I put this in a computer, line of computer code, not false means true. So that's the computer joke there. OK, uh, I I can hear you're really laughing hard over this whole thing. And, um, you know, because it's hilarious. Um, so today we're really have jumped in to using logical statements to manipulate a program. And um, so we've sort of I've gone through and shown you how in a piece of code, whether it's on your cell phone or on your laptop, and you have buttons, you think of clicking on a button. Well, what code is executed when you click on a button? And we've talked about that today. Um, and um, like the logical if statements can be confusing. Uh, and because um, we've seen that the same word mouse pressed 
can be used in two completely different ways, depending on whether we set it up as a variable or set it up as a function. Now, personally, I have found if I'm trying to learn a new programming language and I'm just trying to learn it on the fly and I'm sort of not going through a tutorial setup, I'm just trying to jump in and write a program using a language I don't understand. Things like having mouse pressed mean two different things, just confuses the hell out of me. And uh, which is why you should try to go through tutorials. Now, let me uh, let me go back and remind you of this guy here, processing.org. This guy right here is tutorials. Um, if you're serious and learning more about processing, after we finish the course, I would recommend that you go back and start looking at these tutorials. Because he does a good job. Like I said, I he's better than me. He does a good job. And uh, go through all of his tutorials in between what you've learned in the course, and then you get it reinforced by the tutorials. Um, you really start to figure this out and get good at it. Now, with me, I'm learning something completely new like this. And typically, the way it works for me is a first time through, I do something, I'm learning about something, I may understand 10% of it. And it can be really discouraging and depressing that I look at something and understand so little of what's going on. But then if I just go back and go over everything all over again, I learn a little bit more. And after doing this a few times, um, I really begin to understand it, uh, which is uh, a secret that maybe um, many of uh, you guys here in college, you might not have picked up on it yet in that you know, just sitting through class once, or reading, uh, reading something once, usually isn't enough for you to learn what's going on. You have to go back over things a few times. So guess what I'm saying is that for, especially for this lecture like today, with these if statements can be confusing. Um, and uh, you might have to go over this lecture several times before you start to understand what's going on. And uh, so what you're really supposed to be getting out of this out of this course, you're supposed to be getting enough to get you past that initial resistance. But if you really want to learn more and better, learn it better, whether it's Excel or processing, you're going to have to go back over things and go over some of these tutorials. There are lots of tutorials online. I gave you the textbook. Now, you may have noticed that in my pre-recorded videos, I'm actually going through the textbook section by section on those pre-recorded videos. So you have the textbook. You can go through those videos, going through the textbook section by section. Let's say we get halfway through it by the end of the course, and then you can continue to go through the textbook section by section. But then in addition to that, in a slightly different order, I'm going through these lecture videos. So the lecture videos, I'm doing things in roughly the same order, but a little bit different. So you're seeing things from two different viewpoints. OK, the pre-recorded videos is the textbook, and then there's something else that I'm doing here in the classroom. And um, you know, Hopefully, then you can kind of pull some things together and get an appreciation as to uh, uh, how this is working. It always seems really challenging the first time through. 
whether you're learning calculus for the first time or chemistry for the first time or programming for the first time. It all seems really challenging. And you just have to keep going back over it and over it. And um, that's true uh, for everyone. Uh, and it's true for me. It's true for the other professors. Um, there's nobody out there that gets things absolutely perfect, understanding nobody the first time through. You have to keep going over it a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, OK, now. Let's see. So here, let me just show you here. I had this up here and forgot that I wasn't showing it. Here, the processing window, I'm saying, look at this, these, this guy's tutorials. Hello, processing. He goes through these steps one at a time, similar to what I'm doing, except again, in a slightly different order. You go through, go through his videos. I told you, I think they're really well done. So you have my uh, my stuff, my pre-recorded stuff, my classroom stuff. You have his processing tutorials, and uh, you get to be pretty good at it after a while. And uh, you'd be surprised. It you know it will take a few weeks. It's not going to happen right away, but you get to the point where you want to write a processing program to do something. And you will have done enough where you can start to write things and figure it out and, and make the program do something. And um, so so with that, um, I'm done here today. I want to stop recording.